Okay, so let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Foreman, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this presentation webinar, one of a series of webinars which is being offered by NMA for free throughout this spring and summer. And before anything else, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you, a huge thank you for taking the time out of your days to be with us. It's great to have so many people join us. Of course, today the focus is English, and we'll be looking at our English books for ESO and Bachillerato, namely Smart Time and New on Screen by Express Publishing. I'll try not to give too much away about the presentation itself, but there are some things which I'd like to mention, some housekeeping notices, if you will. So, firstly, the talk will last around 45 minutes, and even though we were originally designated for an hour, 45 minutes will be for the presentation, leaving some time hopefully at the end to take some questions or, or to resolve any doubts that there may be. Also, it's important to remember that this session, this webinar will be recorded and it will be sent directly to the email address which you use to register. So it will be sent to you automatically. However, if you wanna share it with colleagues perhaps, you can also access it online via YouTube or edabedigital.com. I'll share links later, so don't worry about that. And they will be available in a few days. We have, of course, for obvious reasons, disabled your microphones and cameras to enable and to ensure a smooth operation. And we don't have any technical wobbles, okay? But we do still have opportunities to interact with each other using the chat box. Or if you have a question, it's really important to use the questions and answers section. Some people have their Zoom configured in English, obviously questions and answers or preguntas y respuestas, okay? So make sure that if you have a question to put it in the questions and answers, otherwise we might miss it. And that's what we do not want to do. We want to see and reach all of your questions. Okay, what else was there? Right now, if you would like to make a comment, say hello, tell us where you're watching from, then of course, please feel free to use the chat box, okay? Now, without further ado, let's meet our presenter for today, my good colleague, Adam Sands. Adam is an English language consultant for EDEBE and Express Publishing down in the south of Spain, and he has been so for the last five years. Perhaps more importantly though, are Adam's years as a teacher. Adam spent more than 20 years teaching adolescence. And so when he teaches, well, sorry, when he talks about teaching this age group, he really talks from a position of, of experience. And I really hope that that will shine, will shine through in today's presentation. Hope, no, I'm sure it will. So without further ado, over to you, Adam. I will pass you the power. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Christopher, for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, we're talking about uh, smart time and new on screen. Um, in an ideal world, uh, it would be nice to be able to focus um, on the two separate projects. Um, but for convenience today, we're going to be looking at the, the two uh, titles. Um, and in fact, you will find that there are some uh, generic similarities between the two things. Um, but before we go any further, uh, let's ask a, a very important question. Uh, Christopher is going to help me uh, with this uh, in, in the vote function uh, that we're using today on Zoom, um, at referring to uh, what courses do you teach? Are you uh, an ESO teacher? Are you a bachelorato teacher? Or, or do you teach both? Okay, I can see that on the screen now. So if everybody would like to, to answer that, that will give us a good idea uh, a little bit. And it helps us obviously think about um, the, the direction of, of our talk today as well, uh, knowing uh, the audience is always be able to, to find that uh, interaction and that connection at the beginning. So we have some results coming in, Adam. Uh, we can see that the majority, so far anyway, the majority of people are SO teachers, around 70%. We have around 15, what, well, 14% for bachillerato and 14% who teach both. So the, the majority are SO teachers, but we do have some bachillerato teachers as well, as, as we would expect. 
Okay, great. Thanks for that. And thanks for everybody for your participation as well. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's a constantly changing thing. This may be the situation for this course, uh, but we perfectly understand that quite often you're required to, to teach the two separate courses, uh, maybe in, in future academic years. Okay, well, let's go straight to, uh, to the heart of the matter in terms of the, uh, the actual presentation itself. We're talking about uh, smart time uh, and you on screen. Uh, immediately there, you can see uh, the levels. Um, and, and that's an important point to make uh, about the two se series uh, from the very beginning. Um, smart time, A1 to B1 plus level, new on screen, B1 plus uh, to B2 level. So immediately you can already see that there's a, a very nice um, progression between ESO and bachelorato courses. And of course, not only that, but also a natural sequence uh, through the levels, through A1, A2, B1, uh, and up to B2. Um, what we have in common with these two books is that both books uh, offer a holistic approach uh, to learning that constantly integrates the four language skills. And, and New on Screen in particular is a book that really does help uh, students prepare for the bachelorato exams. Uh, in, in a way, we could say that New on Screen um, is Smart Times Big Brother. I know that's a phrase that uh, Christopher often uses, uh, and it really is true, because there are, as we mentioned earlier, there are many of those similarities that you find um, within the methodology of the books. Okay, um, now let's take a closer look um, at how the units themselves are organized. Um, and this is particularly useful uh, for teachers that are interested in, in a nice, clear structure uh, to, to the books themselves. Uh, first of all, we're talking about uh, objectives. Now, we may overlook this as a very simple point. Um, certainly as teachers, we dedicate a, a lot of time to our planning of our classes, the planning of our academic year, but we must never overlook the importance of transmitting those objectives, of transmitting what we are going to be studying in the units for our students so that they can also follow where we are going and also follow their own progress, a, a very important fundamental feature. Um, we kick off with reading. Uh, 1A in the unit structure of the book uh, is reading, often introducing a, a large piece of text. Uh, this one's talking about, would you dare do a job uh, like swimming with sharks, uh, known as the shark man. Uh, so that's how uh, the unit is uh, configured. It then goes into more detail in terms of specific vocabulary related to, to that topic within the unit structure itself. And of course, grammar and use, we, we need to see that within our SO and bachelorato books. Uh, and there we have the introduction of the grammar and use section within the unit structure. And, and you can see there just from the banner, already we're, we're looking at video material. Uh, one of the things that uh, Express Publishing um, is, is very well known for is the, 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 the complete range of video and audio material uh, within all of their books, not just in, in, in SO and bachelorato. Listening skills, um, one of the uh, kind of more receptive skills, if you like, but as such an important feature uh, that you need and that you expect within your books itself. And of course, here we have that fundamental uh, productive skill of speaking. This is the dedicated speaking skills section within the book. Uh, here it's looking at a particular area of a job interview uh, and making comparisons so that students start to build up um, the confidence and the oral communication skills necessary uh, for these two level books. And writing as well. We have dedicated writing sections within the unit structure itself, such an essential element that we would need to find both in ESO and in bachelorato uh, courses. Uh, and this is something that we're going to look at in more detail a little bit later on. Okay, at language in focus, of course, um, another very, very uh, important area where we uh, as teachers can offer the opportunity for our students to look in more detail and review the vocabulary and the grammar formations that they would expect uh, that they will find within that unit itself. And of course, progress check. We've talked about the objectives, but we also need that our students and that us as teachers constantly, uh, regularly at every unit uh, check the progress of our students uh, so that they can see for themselves 
um, that they're going in the right direction and that they can improve on areas that they're having more difficulties with. And we at a very early stage as teachers can identify those problematic areas for our students. CLIL, CLIL as well. Um, we would expect to see CLIL uh, in the books and there it is. Uh, it covers a whole range uh, across the curriculum. Here's an example taken from personal, social, uh, health and uh, economic. It's looking at the very difficult area of how tackling bullying, for example, um, uh, is handled uh, in schools. And of course, related as well, we have culture. Culture is such an, a fundamental feature of language learning. It helps students put language learning into context. Uh, and here we have a nice article uh, related to uh, London uh, black cabs uh, and how taxi drivers have to uh, uh, require a specific license uh, to, to drive a London black cab. And here we have, apart from the speaking, here we have the, the first mention of presentation skills. We talked about it earlier. Um, such a fundamental feature uh, when we are talking about uh, improving confidence in speaking, because we're not just talking about speaking here, we're talking about the need to develop public speaking skills, something that they will take with them as a life skill later on uh, in life. And then finally, and, and perhaps most important of all, uh, exam practice. How important is that? How important is that when our students arrive at the, uh, the final course, for example, in the fourth course of ESSO? And how important is that for the ABOW exams that our students are preparing when they're doing a bachelorato course? Okay, um, we've had a, a brief look now at how the structure is, is formed within, the unit structure is formed within the book. Um, what I'd like to do now is share with you a video um, that Christopher has kindly prepared for us. It is slightly low volume, so please put up your volume to the maximum, but you will understand how, how it works because it's about the interactive whiteboard software, probably the most essential tool um, that Express Publishing can offer you as teachers in the teaching of ESO and Bachelorato. And within the video, we can see also uh, how the unit structures are formed and, and a lot more as well. So let's go to the video. Introductions, the interactive and the hardware, the offline and user-friendly classroom tool that teachers can use to deliver their daily classes. In the home screen, we're able to visualize all of the units, but we can also see the different sections which can be found either in the back of the student's book or work. To the right, we can also see different features which are unique to this software. Let's click on a unit and investigate. Here we can see all of the pages which belong to Unit 5. I want to click on these pages in order to access the activities. There's also a clear indicator to show us on which pages we can expect to find games or videos. Once we're on the page, we can see that these orange circles appear around the exercises. These circles tell us that we click on them and then we can do the activities. And once inside an activity, Everything that you need to complete the activity will automatically appear on the bottom right of the screen. As you'll see, general navigation of the software is very easy and intuitive to use. By using the arrows on the bottom of the screen to click from one activity to the next, the teachers don't have to constantly exit and re enter the page. This saves lots of time and means it can be much easier to manage and navigate. Another important feature of the interactive whiteboard software is the word list. This can always be found in a central position towards the bottom of the page. It's interactive and it contains definitions as well as audio in order to help students get a good idea of both meaning and pronunciation. At the end of this class, we're offered the opportunity to watch the video. And the videos are an incredibly important part of the software and what we're teaching in general. They engage students as well as inform them using the meaning medium that makes sense to them. We can turn some type of color off, we can enlarge the screen, and most importantly, we can watch them as many times as necessary in order to obtain full understanding. When you come to the end of the page, the arrow turns gray and you have to return to the previous screen. But hopefully you'll see that what we get from this software is flexibility and support which accommodates for both of these differences, always giving options to teachers and to students. Right, back on the home. We also have other features of the software which aren't available anywhere else, such as quizzes.
suppose it's you suppose it's reorganizing their respective modules so that even fun time can be relevant to that module. They've been designed to be motivating and engaging Many thanks for watching this introduction to the interactive whiteboard software. If you would like more information, please write to us using the email which appears on your screen now. Bye bye. Okay, so that's the, the interactive whiteboard software. Um, not to worry if you couldn't hear uh, the audio particularly well, because I'm going to, to show you something now. Um, and, and of course, you'll be able to see exactly uh, what Christopher was, was demonstrating there with the software. We know that you need a software um, that engages students, a software that entertains students, and a software that educates students. They are the three fundamental pillars of the Express Publishing software, and, and we believe they deliver on all accounts. Um, but it doesn't just end there. Um, the important thing, and for me, one of the most fundamental things about the Express Publishing methodology is the fact that our students also have access to this software via the IE book. Uh, basically, it's very, very similar, if not the same uh, as, as the software that we use in the classroom. Um, the only key difference is that students have the facility for a check function, um, which is specifically designed that way. They don't have the answers because we know that they would be quite passive uh, with their learning process um, if they were provided with the answers that we have uh, in the teacher software. So they are given a check function so that they can uh, actively practice and repeat and repetition, of course, as we know, is, is the key to success. So what we're going to do now, uh, if you bear with me one second, we're going to have a, a look at the IE book. I'm just going to uh, change screens for one second. And here, here we have the, the IE book. Um, and of course, you, we can't notice the difference between what we use um, in the classroom and, and what our students will have access to. Um, and that is fundamental. It's fundamental because it creates a, a union between what they learn in the classroom and, and what they learn out of the classroom. And as teachers, we know, particularly with adolescents, the real battle with language learning uh, takes place out of the classroom. Christopher kindly highlighted uh, some areas within the actual um, unit five. We can go to that unit five um, just to demonstrate to you um, that students have exact access to exactly the same material. Here we have the, the, the ex activity that uh, Christopher was looking at. You can see there at the top, it's a check function this time. Um, students have the opportunity, for example, um, to answer questions related here. They have, um, of course, the, the words as well, the vocabulary related, the word list related to every unit uh, that Christopher identified. Of course, they also have um, access to artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. Help practice correct pronunciation. Um, and we continue, there are uh, drag and drop functions that students can practice. And of course, if we continue through the activities that Christopher did, we finally come to the, the video material uh, that Christopher mentioned. Intelligence. We've come to building 200 on. And how, how important, how important is that? students. Um, one, they get to repeat, as Christopher said in the video, they get to repeat. They've got questions. There are questions and think uh, related questions related to the video material. Um, they can repeat as many times as they want. And of course, also, let's not forget, if we are uh, teaching and we don't have time to be able to cover the, the video material, well, of course, it's a fun way of being assigning that uh, to our students um, for as a homework activity. And then finally, just to touch on what Christopher mentioned there, which is, of course, the, the videos and games material. Uh, the videos and games, there we have um, videos uh, related to all of the units, as mentioned previously, and then, of course, the games and the questions. 
vocabulary games, grammar games, uh, every uh, unit uh, is covered by this, as well as in a quizzes function as well. Many times we often think at the end of a term, uh, probably it's our most successful classes or one, one most successful from a student's point of view, most memorable, because we have time, we're relaxed, the evaluations are done. Um, well, with this, we have opportunity to do this on a regular basis um, in our online, uh, 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 in an online way, um, which, is, which is fundamental for uh, engaging students in a motivational way. Okay, good. Um, I will now go back to uh, the presentation. Bear with me for one second. Okay, um, some of the things that uh, I should probably just mention at this stage with regards to, to the, uh, the software, yes, it can be used uh, offline. That's really, really important. So once you've uh, downloaded the software, it's then available to, to you and to your students to, to use offline. Um, also, very, very importantly, there are demos available um, for each and every one of the, uh, the uh, secondary SO courses and for the two new on-screen bachelorato courses. We have software demos available. Um, Christopher will provide you with the, the email address to be at contacta. Um, and we'll be happy to be able to send you a copy of those and you'll be able to evaluate for yourself with your teams um, how the Express Publishing software works uh, for secondary and for bachelorato. Okay, uh, good. Uh, at this stage, I think it's good now to move on to what I consider to be the very essence or spirit um, of these two books, which is the integration um, of the four skills. We believe that you need a book that integrates all four language skills in, in a constant and systematic way. We also believe that you need a strong a book that is strong on the productive or active skills that we talked about uh, earlier. OK, uh, at this stage, let's go back to the vote. Um, I'd be really interested to know, uh, and I know that the majority of the audience today are, are SO teachers, I'd be really interested to know from your point of view as teachers, um, out of the four skills, which one do you consider uh, to be the most challenging for your students to improve? Christopher will provide you with the vote. There it goes. So you can choose one of those four skills and let's see what, uh, what we have. I'm live again. Adam here to help you and give you some feedback on the on the votes or on these questions. We're getting okay. We're getting we're getting answers coming in from all for all of the skills. At the moment, speaking is winning as 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 the most difficult to improve. Okay, listening is twenty. Okay, so good. Listening's at twenty five percent. Speaking at thirty eight percent. Reading at thirteen percent. Writing at twenty five. So listening and writing are tied. And the winner for now is speaking. Uh, I think that's it. Have we got any okay. more coming in? Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Oh, yeah, I can see the results now coming okay, in. Okay, speaking um, was the winner in this case. Speaking is the clear winner. Okay, so um, we're not going to disappoint you. Um, and I can see that listening and writing are, are not far behind either. Um, so you will not be disappointed with these two books because um, they very much uh, do look at these areas. Uh, Chris, if you could now remove the vote, that would be great. Thank you very much. Has it gone? Uh, not yet. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, yes. One of the things that I want to emphasize for you today um, is how fundamental um, the speaking and writing elements are in, in, in the two books itself. Um, we have presentation skills uh, sections. We saw that's well aside from the speaking sections that we saw within the unit structure itself. Um, we have the writing sections that we saw as well within the unit structure. But apart from those writing sections, we, we also have the additional writing booklets and they can be found in uh, Smart Time 4, New On Screen 1 and New On Screen 2. 
I think we should start then um, by looking at probably what many people, certainly for us as teachers, consider to be one of the most challenging areas um, of, of teaching these productive skills, uh, which is writing. Okay, um, not to worry about the, uh, the actual uh, comments itself. These are, these are clients' comments um, about uh, this particular book. I think perhaps some of you, if not many of you, uh, will know Express Publishing uh, thanks to uh, the great success of the successful writing series. Um, it, it's one of the key areas of, of Express Publishing. Um, and, and you'll be pleased to know that the, the, the methodology, the popular methodology um, and style of, of this three book series uh, is found within Smart Time and You On Screen. And of course, it has been adapted to be age appropriate for, for adolescent learners, which is important to know. Now, Virginia Evans, who, which is an iconic name in English language teaching, um, she understood very well the difficulty uh, of teaching writing. And she wanted to, to help teachers on their writing journey. Uh, which is the reason why this book came into existence. And of course, in turn, let's not forget that this indirectly as well, uh, or directly, uh, helps students to become more conscious of, of, of their writing. So with Virginia Evans, we have the express writing model. Now, this is a, a purposeful and, and, and considered way of showing students how they can organize their thoughts. As you can see there from, uh, from the slide, um, it looks at uh, the rubric analysis. It begins with the rubric analysis. It looks at the model uh, analysis um, and students become more conscious of what they are doing because they have an analysis as an example of the type of writing they will be studying before they actually do the main writing task itself. Here in green, um, uh, Virginia Evans considered these to be absolutely essential items in, in, write, in teaching writing skills. Uh, the rubric analysis, the model analysis, the useful language, etc. In red are what are considered um, highly recommended but optional. So language presentation and practice, brainstorming and drafting are, are, are more optional but still fundamental elements of the Virginia Evans Express writing model. Uh, now let's have a look at some of the examples uh, taken from Smart Time 2. So we're, we're talking about pre-writing activities. These are absolutely crucial if we want students to improve their writing. And that's not just in English, also in their native languages as well. Um, we want a variety of activities which come before the main task. Uh, they help give students the right language as well as providing them with the right ideas uh, and structures. Students are then very well prepared for the, time, the final tasks. They have already worked out what type of language they need to use, as well as the structure. And by drilling in these good writing habits, your students will dramatically improve uh, in this difficult task. And let's not forget an important point here. Uh, writing tasks, particularly when it comes to evaluation, uh, when it comes to uh, official exams, often carry a lot of marks, carry more marks than other skills within the actual examination papers itself. So it's a fundamental that our students have a good grasp of this difficult skill. After the completion of the pre-writing tasks, um, let's now have a look at how the actual main task itself um, is carried out by students. And this is again with the help of a video that Chris has put together um, in association with using the, the software. Pre-writing activities, then comes the time for them to complete their written task. Now, use sentences on the right and phrases from the useful language box to complete your letter. Follow the plan. So here we can see the, the task itself. This is what is being asked of us. Okay, and then down here, we have a simple structure with us well, asking us to fill in the gaps. Here, we have the main points which we need to include, but we also have further information available to us. Things like a simple plan, what to include in which paragraph. Useful language. This is always context specific. 
so a semi-formal thank you letter, will have semi-formal language included in this section. Once students have actually finished the task and they've elaborated their written text, we can compare it to an example given. Okay, and you can see clearly how the parts which students had to fill out are also in blue, so they can compare very easily to their answers. What's more, we can also listen to Dear it. Mr. and Mrs. Carter, I am writing to thank you for your kindness during my stay with you. Okay. So there we can see how the software, again, the interactive software, supports uh, both the teaching and, of course, on the other hand, the IE book, the students, the learning. Um, of, of writing skills. Those writing skills, um, as mentioned earlier, uh, they come with a complementary um, booklet, writing booklet, um, which is found in the workbook pack. Uh, it comes with the higher levels, as also mentioned. So we're looking at Smart Time 4, New On Screen 1, and New On Screen 2. And I think we can refer to it perhaps as a bridge uh, between uh, ESO and Bachelorato courses. The booklet, important, importantly, as we mentioned earlier, uh, goes through all the different writing styles with a wide variety of examples, models and activities, offering teachers and students all the tools they will ever need uh, to teach um, and learn writing skills. Here we have examples of opinion essays, uh, for and against essays, essays providing solutions to a problem, for example. Um, all in all, the writing skills booklet, the writing skills sections, thanks to Virginia Evans, um, is a proven to be one of the most popular features of the two books uh, with our clients. Okay, uh, now uh, let's turn our attention to what was identified by uh, our audience today um, as being probably the most challenging area for our students to learn, which is the speaking part. Well, you'll be pleased to know that they're also, that this model um, also exists throughout um, these two difficult skills. And let's not forget that listening is also very closely associated with speaking activities. So many of the things that we're doing here also are associated with the other skill um, that, you found, that you found challenging for your students to improve on, uh, which is the listening part. Okay, so we need a model and the model is here. We can see it uh, from here. We, get, we have a clearly defined model for, for teaching and learning uh, presentation skills. Um, we talked earlier, I've often found in all the years that I was teaching, I often found that probably I spent more time teaching the confidence to speak English rather than actually the mechanics of speaking English itself. Here you find with the express model that the students um, adapt and learn and develop with both of those skills. Because of course, the more tools that we offer our students, the more confident they are as speakers. And like the writing tasks, we need pre-presentation, pre-speaking tasks before we actually get to the presentation itself. So here's a model, uh, body language. When, when we're talking about adolescents, this is a fundamental area um, where they need encouragement, they need development, they need practice and improvement. So learning the do's and don'ts, the simple uh, uh, aspect of standing in front of the class, um, the first kind of uh, real experience of public speaking, uh, if you will, this is fundamental to their development and to their confidence. Also using the software, um, this is also a nice way to be able to show students it's not always easy presenting the material in the way that you want, because they will often say, uh, I don't understand this, I, or I can't read this correctly. So having them have an appreciation of how they present their material, how they present their content is also a very, very fundamental feature of giving them confidence and helping them um, with their oral communication uh, ability. And of course, the step-by-step the -step guides that with spidergrams as well, these are just absolutely essential in this journey um, of improving speaking. Um, here we've got steps to follow, brainstorm for ideas, find appropriate visuals, prepare your presentation, practice your presentation, and then of course, finally, give the presentation itself. We like to talk about a journey because it is a journey. It's not something that necessarily ever ends. 
learning writing, learning speaking in a second language is a journey. And all of these tools give our students the confidence to be able to follow that road, that journey, and know the direction in which they're going to, and know the point in which they need to get at uh, in order to be able to achieve uh, a good level of oral communication. Okay. Uh, study skills as well, essential um, in, in our list, in our model. We also looked in writing, and here we have it again in presentation skills. We need another tool we need to give our students when they're practicing uh, speaking or public speaking, that might, might be, is, of course, a plan and useful language that they can use, more tools to help them on their journey. And, of course, model analysis, something absolutely classic in express publishing materials. Um, here we have something relevant to uh, um, uh, teaching in a science club, present the, the pros and cons of home cooked food to other members of the club. Um, you'll often find a realia, lots of ideas, lots of examples within Express Publishing, uh, within Smart Time and Nuance Screen that students can relate to. And then finally, of course, uh, we're looking uh, at a, a checklist here, a, a checklist uh, that helps students be able to identify uh, where they are with, uh, with their presentation skills development. Um, when they've finished the presentation, so post-presentation, um, then they can make sure and do a final checklist uh, to help them on their way. Okay. Now, uh, at this stage, um, I'd like to, to say that um, it's also equally important um, that we, and these two books, address the fundamental area, the fundamental element of exam preparation. It's just as important in ESSO, and particularly with, with, with the local uh, regions offering uh, evaluations in the fourth, the end of the fourth ESSO course, as it is, uh, of course, with Bachelorato and EBAO. Okay, so what, one of the first things to mention is, is of course, is, is the actual levels itself. Um, and, and importantly, with those levels, um, we're talking about uh, how important the levels are linked directly, directly to uh, the ex selectivity data exams. And this you can find within uh, New One Screen itself. Um, they also, uh, also, when we talk about levels, uh, are an ideal companion uh, when we're talking about the preparation of other official ex external exams, whether it's A2, B1, or, or, or B2 levels. Okay. We also would expect to see a large variety of activities, exam practice activities. Of course, every school has its own ambitions and, and uh, with its exams and what levels it wants its students to be able to achieve. Um, and so what you would need within a course book is a book that covers a whole variety of exam uh, practice activities, multiple choice, fill the gap, elaborate a response, give an opinion, language and use, et cetera. Um, here we have an example of reading, reading comprehension, uh, looking at uh, the, the aspect of is your loneliness uh, killing you? Okay, something that probably uh, often some of us have felt uh, during the last year uh, with the pandemic. Okay, and let's not forget, let's go back and let's not forget our interactive whiteboard software, our essential tool uh, as teachers. All examples, all examples of the exam practice, of course, can be found uh, in the software itself, meaning that students, uh, sorry, that teachers can go through the answers um, with their students in class. And, and let's remember that that can be face to face or it can be online as well, because the software enables us to be able to cover those two very different formats of teaching classes. And I know a lot of us have had to go online and hybrid classes in the, in the last year. Okay, let's now have a closer look at the exam content, content itself in the way that it's presented in the book. Again, we're looking at models, we're looking at uh, ideas that we can give our students as teachers to be able to build up their exam practice. If students lack confidence in speaking, if our students have difficulties uh, with listening and with writing, they also 
uh, have difficulties with preparing well for exams. They need a model um, and that will help give them confidence uh, and help them uh, achieve exam success. Study skills, preparing for the task. This is classic uh, learning to learn material that Express offers in all of its models. Okay, and there we have listening as well. So for our students that are concerned about uh, listening, for teachers who feel that students are having worried listening, you will find ample listening material, particularly in smart time when it comes to exam practice. But of course, let's not forget all the audio and video material that's available uh, in the software itself. Multiple choice, we'd expect to find those type of questions uh, within exam practice, there they are. And of course, typical formations as well, sentence transformation and word for, uh, formations. Okay, um, now we're looking at material, exam practice material that you can exclusively find uh, within the new on-screen uh, books itself. Reading comprehension, use of English, and writing uh, compositions, well, these areas are absolutely fundamental to our exams and selectividad. So you'll be pleased to know that they are directly linked uh, to about uh, preparation. Um, in terms of structure, okay, there are some differences from uh, some autonomous uh, communities to others, but they more or less follow a, a similar format. In addition to that, there are also uh, EBAO style tests on the EDABAY platforms, and we'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. And then finally, um, it's, I'd like to mention as well, when it comes to exam practice, we're also uh, in the, the TRP, the Teachers Resource Pack. We also have uh, unit reviews worksheets. There are nine of them in the Smart Time series um, and in new on screen one, um, and so one for every unit. And of course, new on screen two has less uh, modules, uh, six modules, um, so six tests there. And of course, then also the two books also come with test material at different levels, one a standard level uh, and one a higher level. Okay, let's uh, continue with a little bit more about the digital materials that are available uh, with these two series. We've looked at how um, the interactive whiteboard software for us as teachers and the IE book for our students is such a fundamental tool uh, for their learning. Also, you'll be pleased to know that a CLIL reader, uh, a CLIL reader is available uh, with the series um, for each of, uh, of the courses. Um, as teachers, we receive a book and the students will receive uh, an activation code. And this is a really nice diversion uh, that we can offer our students. It's actually a nice activity that we can do. Uh, it's a nice activity that we can give as, as homework. There are also activities within the book itself. So a very good one for homework and for, uh, for project work um, and as an ideal launch pad uh, for that project work. Okay, we mentioned it earlier. Um, also, we need to uh, uh, be talking about what other tools we have available for us as teachers. We've talked about uh, how important it is uh, for some of us as teachers to follow uh, the, the structure, the unit structure in a book. We've then increased that flexibility by looking at the interactive whiteboard software and we can choose and decide how we present the material to our students. And here we have what we could consider the ultimate flexibility for us as teachers. Um, there are two platforms. One could be considered a first and a second generation platform from Edabay. Edabay on Plus is our latest uh, platform and Christopher kindly has provided a video to explain what uh, we can expect uh, for us as teachers. Page for Edabay on Plus. It's divided into two sections as you can see. Libros Edabay and Mis Libros. Libros Edabay are quite simply the books as they are produced by the publisher. If I click on Smart Time 2. So we can see that the book is divided into its units and then when we click on a unit, the content is then divided up into what we call tarjetas. If we click on a tarjeta, we can access the activities as they appear in the book. So in the section Libero TV, we simply find the book as it is designed by the publisher. 
If, however, as a teacher, you're looking to incorporate a bit more of your own content or to play around with the content of the book, what you want to do is go to Mis Libros, Añadir Contenido, and then make a copy of the book. So again, we're inside the book, all very much looks the same. But then once we click on a unit, we can start to play around with it. First and foremost, we could change the order perhaps. Okay. So now I've got the reading before the introduction of the unit. So apart from changing the order of the material, we can also add our own content. If we click here on Añadir Contenido, we can add some information, whether it's a YouTube link or an article, we can add an activity. This is always useful if we want to reinforce a certain area of our language learning. We quite simply establish the name, establish the, the parameters in terms of date and time, create, and then we can choose the type of activity we want students to do and then create the activity. So we can change the order of the content. We can add our own content. Of course, if we don't have time, we can delete certain parts of the content. Another really interesting thing that you may have seen just now in this drop down menu is that we can also synchronize with Google Classroom. So any changes that you make to the content, you can synchronize everything and make it all nice and neat with the Google Classroom that you may already have. So um, a really, really important tool for us as teachers um, to uh, present, edit and create uh, the material that you have within Smart Time in your on screen. The student experience is a very similar one as well. I should mention that all the materials are also available on the platforms, both Edubay On and Edubay On Plus. What is the difference? Well, it really depends on the level of digitalization that you want within your school itself. And of course, let's not forget support. Uh, full support is available for uh, for you as teachers in in how to use Edubay on plus um, that will be arranged by the commercial representative for Edubay um, and also with the support of the Edubay consultants and also of course don't forget uh, that us as the express publishing uh, academic consultant team also are always here to help with any questions that you have with regards to the content or the resources uh, available within the material itself. And there will be training available um, on Edubay on Plus for, for clients uh, that are interested uh, in either of these two series. Okay, um, to conclude the main part of our presentation, let's now very, very briefly uh, have a look at the components uh, for the two materials. Um, we're looking at, for the students, the student book, um, for the uh, new on screen pack comes with uh, audios as well. The workbook pack, this is really important because we include the workbook itself and the IE book and the activation code for our students as well as the writing book. So the workbook pack is a really important feature that we need to consider for our students in terms of their uh, complete development. And of course, then there are also the uh, Edubay on licenses, either for Edubay on plus or Edubay on. As teachers, we have a complete pack of materials available as well. And of course, it would be amiss of me not to mention the teacher's book because the teacher's book, a lot of time and effort has been put into the teacher's book to be able to help you uh, offer and prepare your classes in a very clear and methodical way. More than just the answer keys themselves. There are aims, there are critical thinking. And of course, as always, as you express, expect within Express Publishing Material, there are step-by-step -step guides. Here is an example example uh, of how we can teach the difference between the past simple and the past simple continuous. And following on from that in terms of materials, of course, there's a student book and also the software that we looked at, the interactive software, and as well, uh, the licenses it's, itself as well. Okay. Um, Christopher. Um, that covers the main area of the presentation itself. Um, with the time remaining, are there any questions uh, that people are asking with regards to uh, uh, the two materials? Yes, uh, I've tried to answer a couple of the kind of the simple yes or no questions throughout. 
So uh, a couple of them have been resolved already, but I have saved a couple of the juicy ones for you at the end. Oh, good. I like juicy uh, questions. I hope they're not too difficult because I'm, I'm in need of a cup of tea. Well, we'll only know once I read them. So uh, let me let me read out the first one for you. Okay. Um, can you can you install the various softwares without the disk? Uh, yeah, that's actually a good question. Uh, yes, um, thanks to the new web uh, site that Express Publishing have only recently created. Um, of course, they recognize that many computers, many laptops now come without a disk reader. So uh, in many ways, C CDs and disks are becoming obsolete. Mm -hmm. So yes, indeed, you can. There's a web page. Um, all, you, all that's required is the activation code, and you can directly uh, download the software from that page, uh, both for the teacher with the art interactive whiteboard software and for the student in terms of the IE book. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, another question, the next one is, is new on screen well, and, and smart time, I guess, but this teacher was specifically asking for new on screen, I guess, primarily because of the age, but is new on screen and smart time, are they good books for hybrid teaching or for online teaching? Uh, very much so. Um, I, I, we have seen how the software has become such a fundamental tool um, and clients uh, of New One Screen have found it absolutely essential when uh, other, other teachers were, were desperate for resources, how could they go about doing their online classes? Um, we within Express Publishing with the team were simply sharing with teachers, look, um, you can share your software um, uh, the interactive software with your with your Zoom or your Google Meet classes uh, online, and you can do more than that. You can actually give students remote control through Zoom as well, and as well, I believe, as well through through Google Meet now as well. Um, so students can continue to interact with the software in the way they would have done in a face-to-face -face, uh, environment. So a lot of that material and also exam practice as well um, are ideal. The digital tools that come available. Uh, with these materials and of course the, the platforms that are available make it much easier uh, to transfer uh, classes to an online and hybrid environment. Absolutely. The, just the other day I was in a, in a huge secondary school here. I'm, I'm based in Madrid by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier. Uh, so I was just in a school and every classroom is, is equipped with cameras which they which is just a usb connection and they connect it to the computer and they have half of the students at home so they and half of them in the classroom so they really are working in a hybrid environment and i think lots of people are you know despite the fact that the the vaccination program and things are returning to normal we are taking things and we're and we're learning new things that we want to take into the future so um I, so I, it, I agree. It, it, it is important this this online and hybrid environment I agree, Chris, and, and I also think it's important as well for people um, uh, of a similar age to myself, uh, not, not like the, a good young man yourself, Christopher, um, that transition to, to new technology can sometimes be a difficult thing. Um, and I know that a lot of teachers felt overwhelmed uh, back in March of last year with having to learn new platforms like Zoom, for example, hadn't, hadn't taught online classes before. Um, and they found a lot of solace, a, a lot of confidence in the fact that they could literally use the software that they had learned over the years uh, in the classroom and simply transfer that yeah. to an online environment. So there was a natural transition there and that gave them confidence to be able to go on and experiment with, with their hybrid classes. That's it, isn't it? When teachers relax, we relax. So uh, no, good absolutely. news on that front. Um, absolutely. And, 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 sorry. I was just about to launch into the next question, but if you had a, a final thought. No, I was just going to say one f further thought about uh, that question about hybrid teaching. Let's not forget the level of interactivity that's necessary to maintain focus and attention of our students, because we need that. Stu our students need that. Otherwise, they're just going to switch off. Yeah. So having having the software, having interactivity, having those quizzes and games and those video material that we, we've looked at, they are just essential for maintaining motivation and maintaining concentration. And remote control, as you said, if the, if we if we struggle to keep their attention presentially, uh, then you absolutely know, double it for online class. For sure. Particularly with that, particularly with adolescents. I've got two adolescent daughters in in the house, and it's not easy maintaining their attention attention even face to face. No escape. <laughs> okay, um, I've got one more question in the in the. Oh no, two more. Let's go in order. So um, I'm a teacher of ESO and bachillerato. Uh, I understand from your presentation that there is a great continuity in the methodology. Can you confirm this? Would fourth of ESO go smoothly into bachillerato? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the two the, the two books were designed in parallel. In fact, it was your uh, uh, phrase co coined the phrase, Christopher, that uh, uh, new on screen is 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 smart times big brother. It really is. Um, Christopher and I spent a lot of time with the, with the two books and the materials. And yes, there are some differences, but they are really our minor ones. Um, basically, the methodology and the content and the level, the key question that you're asking there, the level you will find a, a natural sequence uh, of levels and a natural progression between the two books from one to the other. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not just uh, us saying that, that client, our clients say that as well. Perfect. I think we've got time for one more question. Okay, and good. It, and it looks like this question is coming from a client because the question is, will Smart Time 3 and 4 be improved for next year? I mean, like Smart Time 1 and 2 are working so far. Um, Adam, if you'll let me take this one. Um, yes, um, Maria Asuncion, for sure. Um, the thing is, some books, well, basically, it's a gradual process of books being changed from basically almost like a flip book PDF style. And they're being transformed from that to a new and improved format, which is called HTML5. And, and they're working on three and four right now, and we will have them before the summer holidays. So all smart time levels one to four, and of course, new on screen, will have the same functions on Edebay on Plus. Yeah, that's really good to know. As we've been talking about, it's very important that, that, we, that we give all of our clients um, access to digital materials. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Any other questions, uh, Chris, um, for today? And of course, let's not forget that everybody, you know, if there are any, I, I've taken the, the wind out of your sails, Christopher. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 please, please. Um, I was just going to launch into the last question. Um, oh, there is one more question. Good. Well, I think there's time for one more. Um, Good. But it's a big question, so we might run over, but we'll try and keep it succinct. Uh, what can you tell us about the new law and, and the books? Oh, that's that's a really good question. I mean, first of all, uh, we're not clear exactly what the new law is going to be. Um, of course, um, the, the draft versions, I believe, are going to be available between kind of May and July. Um, and what we do know about the new law is that it's going to be based in competencies. Uh, that is true in basic competencies, and you would expect that as well. Um, and of course, we've already looked uh, in, 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 in our presentation today at one of the key competencies or two key competencies yeah. of, of, of writing and speaking. So it, we, we feel co very confident with those areas. But of course, at the moment, uh, many regional autonomies are, are working in parallel um, with the government uh, with regards to, to the new law. What we also know, of course, if there are any changes to the bachelorato course, that will also have an impact on the changes to EBAO exams. And of course, that would have to be something that is approved uh, with, with the universities um, and the rectores, no, the conferencias directores. So uh, there, there, it's a process. Uh, and, and as soon as we know what the law is, and of course, then we can go about uh, identifying uh, uh, what, what is necessary, what is required within the books itself. Perfect, perfect. I think I couldn't have explained it any better. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky situation. And it, I know it, it is a feeling a lot of insecurity about it is. the new laws. But I, I would just urge ourselves to remember that, you know, the, these laws come in steps. Um, you know, first thing, everything needs to be approved nationally, locally. And then these things are introduced as well in steps. So, ah. you know, we may we may have situations where a student won't feel the, the force of the new law, so to speak, for a couple of years at least. Absolutely, Chris. And can I just make a, a further point here as well, is that uh, uh, here at Express Publishing, we're always very, very confident that what we produce in our books actually exceeds the requirements uh, of the regional autonomies uh, and of any law, because we, we have high expectations for our students. And that, that very much goes to the, the very essence and philosophy uh, that Virginia Evans created all those years ago, back in 1988. Okay, perfect. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Uh, I would love to thank you all so much for your participation, for your questions, for spending the time with us. I know uh, everybody's incredibly busy these days and, and for you to take the time to join us, is, is it really is a huge pleasure for us. And so we thank you for that. Um, any last thoughts, Adam? And uh, no, 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 no last thoughts at the moment. Um, please feel free to, to contact us at, at the address that's been provided at contact uh, at uh, um, and we can provide demos for everybody. Um, and of course, Christopher, you may want to introduce our next uh, webinar as well uh, that's going to be coming up very soon. 
Absolutely. So as you can see on the screen, we have a presentation very similar to the one from today, which will take place on the 27th of May at the same time. So 530, uh, you know, Spain time. Um, and this will be given by Simone Bleda and assisted by Ruser Clavel. And we are going to be looking at the new infantile method or the new kindergarten teacher or the new kindergarten method for English, which is called the Flibits. Great new method, lots of new features, totally unique in the market. So if you do have any colleagues or if perhaps you do teach yourself in that level, feel free to register and to join us for that one as well. And one final thing, Christopher, am I, am I right in thinking that the recording will be available um, for today and that will be shared with everybody? Absolutely. Yep, you're absolutely right. So just for, perhaps for those who didn't catch us at the beginning, these webinars are going to be recorded. And so they will be sent directly to the website, to the, pardon me, to the email address which you use to register. But apart from that, we'll also be sending them to elevadigital.com. The link is in the chat box. And we will also put them on the Elevay YouTube channel in, in, in the matter of a few days. So keep an eye out for those if you do want to review some of the material. And well, we look forward to hearing any questions. Also in the chat box, I've left the contact that at edebay.net. If you want to receive samples, demos for the software, uh, more information in general, then please feel free to contact us via that email address there. And I believe, Christopher, that uh, uh, an inquesta, a questionnaire will be going out to everybody. So please take a few minutes to fill in that. Um, we re always really appreciate and we read and listen to all of your feedback to always help us on a continuous road to improvement. It's all a journey, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think we could ask for more cooperation. I, I don't think we, we would want any more cooperation than that. We just really need your feedback, your opinions. As you guys as teachers know, feedback and the importance of feedback cannot be underestimated. So that would be a huge help for us if you spent a couple of minutes just answering those questions, which will be sent to you. Okay, right then. That's it from us. Thank you very much. Have yourselves a lovely afternoon and we look forward to seeing you for the presentation of Flibits later on this month. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.